Hey, St. Mary's. I wanted to spend a little time here building on yesterday's sermon and perhaps anticipating a question that maybe some of you left with. We talked yesterday about Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. And we talked about the importance of being shaped by the Jesus way, wedded to the Jesus truth, which brings us the Jesus life, how we need all of these things. And we tried to say that we need to fall back in love with Jesus. That's how we come to the Father. And Jesus says, if we do that, then we will do very great works. And I hope you heard in the sermon yesterday this desire in my heart that we would fall back in love with Jesus. But I was going back over my sermon in my head as I went home, took my nap, and then woke up and read about another shooting. I was thinking particularly about Texas, and then I read later that there was another one in our own state over in Frostburg. And I wanted to anticipate maybe even a criticism that some of you might have had about the sermon yesterday. Because in light of all that, some of you might have said, and I think rightly would have said, well, wait a second, our faith surely has to go beyond just loving Jesus to actually doing something, doing the work of Jesus, right? So the question I want to wonder about here is how can a contemplative commitment to the Jesus way, wedded to the Jesus truth, that brings us the Jesus life, how can that inform a Christ-like response to an increasingly violent society where violence and death are the norm. I heard a story once about how people are trained to identify counterfeit money. And my intuition was to say, well, you study the counterfeits, right? You're always constantly looking at, looking at problems, looking at how people try to cheat the system and address that. And the story said, absolutely not. What they train you to do is to learn every single detail of the original to know every brush stroke, every detail, every line on the bill. And what they say is that once you know the original inside and out, the fakes reveal themselves. And I might suggest so it is with all who are serious about living the Jesus way, the Jesus truth, and the Jesus life. It was the author of Hebrews who said, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What the author of Hebrews is saying is that if we're serious about being Christians, we've got to know Jesus and to walk with him. We've got to know the kingdom. We've got to experience it. We've got to try it out. We've got to mess up. We've got to confess. and We've got to come back. We've got to fall in love with Jesus. We've got to get to know him. And once we start to get a picture of the beauty and the wonder of the kingdom of Jesus, the counterfeits of the world will show themselves. And in that gap between what we believe about Jesus and what we experience in the world, it is in this gap that we discover ways to respond in step with Jesus as the way, truth, and life. This is how a contemplative life leads to meaningful and powerful action in the world. And one of my criticisms of the church right now is that sometimes we try to chase every problem, every counterfeit. We try to identify every problem of the world ahead of of the process of prayer and worship and formation. And when we do that, we do precisely what we see. We break down along political and ideological lines. And when we break down along those lines, we are paralyzed in our ability to do anything meaningful. But if our faith is priority and our faith is deep and is practiced in community, and we are formed together with a shared heart with Christ at the center, then our action can be shaped by the person of Jesus. And that is powerful in its effects. So when I see shooting after shooting, my mind goes to the words of the prophet who said that when this kingdom comes, that you will beat your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning hooks. When I hear about all this, I'm thinking about what Jesus said to Peter when he said, Peter, put your sword away. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. I'm thinking when Jesus crawled up on the mountain and he offered his sermon where he said, blessed are the peacemakers. I'm thinking about the Savior who was crucified on the cross by extremists and politics and yet opened not his mouth. And I'm wondering, church, 
How much longer will we tolerate this horror? Will we live into the counterfeits of this world when Christ's resurrection teaches us a more beautiful way? It's not just on its way. It is here because Christ in his cross and in his resurrection have already defeated death and sin. When will Christians be willing to lay aside the tools of violence and destruction, sometimes maybe even our rights in the service of love of neighbor? So let me be honest, the more I hear about these stories, the more I am wearied by them and I am sad about them. Not because of my politics, but because of my faith. Because every once in a blue moon, I've tasted the kingdom. And I believe in the kingdom. And I believe in the way and the truth and the life that Jesus has come to bring and that we can live right now. And so my heart breaks when we choose the counterfeits instead of the real thing. Because I long for that world, the world Jesus brings. And I want to participate with Jesus in bringing that world about. That's why I'm here. And so today, I keep praying. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And today, we do the best we can to proclaim that world and to work for that world. So friends, if you're struggling, if you're in that place where I am, where just the news is constantly a drag and it makes you sad, I invite you back into the work of prayer, not for thoughts and prayers. Thoughts, that phrase drives me nuts and it has almost no meaning. But I invite you back into prayer, not for thoughts and prayers, but rather to fix your eyes on Jesus yet again, the author and perfecter of our faith. And once our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we will see the gap. And in that gap, we will know the work that we are called to do. And so I pray for you this week, both as you have experiences of Jesus and you feel the burdens of this world. In both, may you know Jesus' way, truth, and life. May you be comforted by his presence and may you be empowered by his life.